Hi there. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. My name is Roger Manus. We are coming to you from the Hardy Realty Studio. And as always, we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. So thanks for joining us. Um, our guests today are Pam Power Smith from the Rome Floyd Chamber, uh, Keith Beecham with KB Aerial Imaging, and Michelle Reichard with Hardy Realty. How is everybody doing? Just a quick hello. Can you all hear me? Yep, doing good. <laughs> Michelle, can you hear me? I can. Okay, we're just we're coming to each other via Zoom. So those of you listening to the podcast will obviously notice the uh, the audio differences, but we are social distancing. We are all in different locations, but at least we can see each other via Zoom, and of course, you all can hear us on the podcast. So um, first and foremost, how is everybody doing through the through the pandemic? It kind of you know it shut things down. We're trying to get back in. Uh, Michelle, how is that affecting you, your world as a as a realtor at Hardy Realty? Um, we've actually been working through it all. It's definitely been different, um, but we were seen as essential workers in the real estate realm. Um, so early on, first couple of weeks it was quiet, but definitely um, we've been been out and about um, using different techniques and technologies. Um, to work sometimes, but not much other other than just the way we do business, business um, kept going. So when you say the way you do business, you know, obviously you have to show houses and that's, you know, are you, are you using more technology to show houses or are you still going in houses with social media, uh, social media, social, <laughs> social distance <laughs> concerns? Um, both. So during this, um, and actually it's, it's pretty um, interesting that Keith, is on here with us because he partners um, with us a lot with our real estate. Um, but we already purchased um, a pretty incredible 3D technology. And Keith um, is actually the driver of that for us. Um, I will be ignorant in talking about how it all works. So I'll save that for him. Um, but that was definitely something that we rolled out a couple weeks into it. And the timing couldn't have been better. Um, but we are still showing with masks, with gloves and wipes. Um, but that 3d imaging truly allows you to explore a property, um, turn around, look up, look down, measure everything without even having to go in it. Wow. That's a perfect segue to you, Keith. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, before, before we talk about that technology, just tell us about your business. What, what is, what is KB aerial imaging? What do you do? Um, I do literally anything from and um photography to video to combining the two um it, it's it i kind of started as a you know it started as a a hobby for years and years and years uh photography and video um i have an it background um so i did computer networking forever and then um i i got into drones when they first came out and this has probably been 7 8 years ago when they were actually um you were actually could purchase them for a reasonable price, I guess is the right way to say it. So I got into it like that. And then that kind of evolved into being asked to do video with the drone. And um, then that rolled into doing more just video in general, photography in general. So now the, the two being combined with the two, it's just, it's um, evolved into a, you know, full-time, you know, video production and photography business for me, which has been great. So is, is your, your work mostly, I mean, are you like shooting corporate things or real estate things or weddings? I mean, or is it a little bit of everything? Um, it's mostly, uh, honestly, it's mostly real estate. Um, gotcha. the, the bulk of my business is real estate, which has been great. Hardy Realty has been, you know, fantastic, um, uh, being a part of that too. Um, and, uh, but I, I do do a lot of other video projects on the side as well. Um, and, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't do weddings. Um, I've never really gotten into that side of it. Um, that ruins weekends. Just by, 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 by choice. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really someone that loves to have to work on a, on the weekend if I don't have to. And that <laughs> weddings are obviously every weekend. Yeah, you, you, do don't, you don't so. get, you don't get a wedding usually Tuesdays at two. <laughs> Tuesdays at two are, don't, don't usually happen. Right. So, um, so, you know, but I, I've, I'm partnered with um, the nature conservancy, um, I've done a couple of projects and I'm currently working on another project with them, which has been big. And um, I've done a little bit with um, uh, Barry College. I've done some recent stuff with them and I'm working on another project with one of their athletes um, 
that was injured a couple of years ago and working on a project for him and um, some uh, some other interesting and, and fun projects coming up too here in the future. So, well, I, I want to get to Pam quickly, but also before I forget, I want to touch base with you about what is what is this three D technology that Michelle referenced? Uh, do you have to set up a um, bunch so of yeah. cameras? <clears throat> yeah. So, well, what happens is that back in March when you know everything was shutting down and and not able to go in houses. And so um, Jimmy Byers called me and we were kind of brainstorming how that could happen. And I told him about the, this, this technology. It had been out for a little while and um, it's, it, it's gotten better through the years. And so um, it's called Matterport is the, the service. And it's a camera. It's a, it's a camera that's able to do 3d or 360 degree images. And <clears throat> basically what happens is you, you create a path through the, through the home, um, moving the camera around and it, and it does a, you start the image and it does a 360 degree image when you've made your way through the whole house, kind of overlapping images. Um, you, you put them into a, a piece of software and it basically creates this entire, um, 3d walkthrough of the house. Um, it creates a pretty cool looking doll house effect of the house that you can see kind of pulling back from it and it literally allows someone to walk through a house uh, see every single thing in that house and not have to actually walk through the front door you can take measurements it's got the ability to for you to there's a ruler um app that's a part of it and you can actually measure walls and and figure out you know if a so full go here or you know whatever you're looking to put so well, it's pretty cool so. well uh, does that make i wonder if that makes life easier for a realtor if we just don't need realtors anymore i'm teasing easy, easy. <laughs> i'm joking because, because we're, we love hardy realty and jimmy Byers and the whole gang over at hardy of course they're our studio sponsor at hardy realty pam sorry it took so long to get to you uh, <laughs> norm, normally i try to do a quick q a around the, around the room here to get going um uh, let's just touch base with you about how the chamber is doing uh you know every week you know, there's, there's society wise, there seems to be one step forward, one step back. How is the chamber, um, handling things over the last week or two? Well, I think you described it really well. Um, one step forward, one step back. Cause I think we had gotten a little overly excited that we could have meetings in person again, but I think we're going to pull back on that and look at next week or two and go back to zoom meetings again. So, um, I think we're just playing it by ear every week of what we need to be doing here at the chamber. And and what about the feedback maybe you're getting from other businesses? I know I see the ribbon tying campaign where businesses reopen and everybody's sticking their toe in the water. Um, but but all in all, what's the business community like in Rome? Well, you know, from that standpoint, I think we're the same as we have been for a couple of weeks. I mean, folks are open. They're all getting creative on how they're, you know, taking care of their customers, whether it's curbside service or you know, whatever they want to buy from a retail store, they'll set it outside, you know, when they get there. So I think everyone's still doing a good job at adapting to that. So we are excited about the tie the ribbon campaign because so many people have agreed to do that. And I think that definitely lets people know who's open and who's not for sure. So I think, you know, since that's a one-on-one interaction with a customer, I think they can be more adaptable. Whereas here at the chamber, if we're supposed to have a meeting with 30 people, that's a whole different situation. Right. Uh, Michelle, we, you talked about the, the real estate business earlier, it never really having to shut down. Did it, did it wane? Did it, I mean, was there a, was there a pause in real, real estate buying and selling too? Or, you know, if people got to move, they're looking for a house, you know, what was, what was the ripple in your industry? Yeah. So I would say the first, when it all kind of, um, halted just the world in general, that, well, that, would have been, we definitely that, felt that, that. that was mid March. Yes. Yeah. So everyone just kind of, you know, planted their feet, regrouped. Um, but I think it's interesting, you know, our inventory has been fairly low for um, a year now. Um, and so we have this kind of group of people who are still in line and still looking and still super interested. And so I think those people really continue to drive. We had um, legit qualified buyers and sellers that still had plans and life to go on. So it took us a minute to realize, um, and at Hardy too, Jimmy was great about um, 
protecting us and making sure we had certain processes and procedures in the office, outside the office. Our office actually did close down and it's still um, kind of operating in our property domain, property management division are still kind of operating differently. Um, but us as independent agents, I think um, each of our businesses kind of um, took different paces, but there was definitely a group of people that had either been looking for so long or that just needed to still sell and relocate or um, whatever it was. They were already under contract and things just had to, that's why it was essential to some people, you know? So it, it's, it paused, we regrouped, we figured it out, but the phones, I personally was surprised. I told my husband, I was like, okay, this could be, you know, we're real estate kind of not, you know, just pauses. It's been on such a trajectory that I would be um, not truthful if I said it wasn't a little um, concerning when it first started, but, you know, it kept going. Well, that's good. Uh, I would imagine pre-pandemic during your yes. n- normal life, you're probably not, well, correct me if I'm wrong, you're probably not in the office a lot anyway. You're at houses, you're at the bank doing closings, you're you're showing houses. Is that is that a fair statement? Um, yes, I think some of us didn't realize I would say I'm not a very, um, I'm not a traditional office person, but where do you meet clients to some people like to sign their stuff in person. So that was an dynamic because we were close to the public. Um, but then copiers and printers. So it caused some of us to ramp up our home offices. Um, but we were still holding weekly meetings and still are weekly meetings in our offices via zoom with all of our agents. So, um, we all had to kind of reconfigure at home. Yeah, the smart the smart money would have been to invest in Zoom back back in February. Why didn't, why didn't we think of that? If we only knew, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Keith, how has how was your business affected out of the, when the pandemic first hit? Um, I mean, did you have shoots scheduled that got canceled? Um, I did. Or- I had a couple. I, yeah, I did. I had a couple that were um, postponed, um, and those I've actually I've done those at this point now. Um, but with, like with Michelle say in the real estate really didn't slow down much. I didn't really slow down much and, and actually got pretty busy. Um, shortly thereafter, everything kind of stopped. And once we got going again, it was, it stayed pretty consistent. Um, the, the only difference, you know, going in a lot of homes, you know, you're, you're you have to be a little more cautious wearing masks when, you know, you're going in there and, and so taking pictures while you're, wearing a mask is a little different, but, um, you know, um, it wasn't too bad and it's, it's stayed pretty, pretty steady the whole time. So it's been great. Um, all things considered, I guess it could have, could have been a whole lot worse. (laughs) So, um, so far so good anyway. Well, one, one of the things that's interesting to me about your profession is, um, in addition to this podcast, um, I'm in the production business myself, but it tends to be television programming. So I don't shoot or edit. I'm more of an editorial executive producer of content, usually sports or business related stuff, which is this, this podcast is an extension of my interest and it's just another platform to create content. But, uh, I am always frustrated with the mentality of, um, just regular folks who think, Oh, I don't need to hire a professional because I have my phone. I can shoot a picture. I can shoot a video, but they lose, they lose the professional lighting, audio, framing editing do you do you have find that you're having to tell people no you need me because just because you have a great phone doesn't mean you can deliver a quality product like i can for you yeah i mean there's obviously there's a difference in you know if someone takes phones are so great now with the the cameras that they have on them it's you know you can take a great picture and you can do a lot of stuff with it um, but there's still the, the angle you have to get and there's still the, you know, the right shots you have to get. And that goes with video as well. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking for the, for the right, the right shot. And like you said, the right lighting and um, you can set, you know, obviously you can set any camera to auto and it'll do what it thinks it's the right thing to do, but there's coloring involved. You know, there's, there's the right white balance. There's, there's so many things that go into it that, Shooting on an, you know, like a, what a iPhone will do is, is going to get you a, a pretty good picture and a pretty good video. But there's, you know, I mean, there's so many different looks you want to get from that. And it's, it, it, technology has allowed the average person to do a pretty good job with it. It's just, 
you know, are you willing to have that or are you willing to take it to the next level and, um, you know, give it just that, that little bit more. So, and, and you can tell the difference. I mean, if you look at, you know, any real estate pictures, I mean, you can tell the difference between something that was taken um, with a phone and something that was taken, you know, and actually colored right, um, set the right white balance in the room and, and all that stuff that goes along with it. So uh, there's a, there is a difference and, and a lot of people understand and, but there, there are people that don't think it's necessary. And, you know, I mean, it's, that's their decision in the end. So, you know, you kind of have to go with that, but yeah, it drives me um, nuts. I'm, I'm fighting, I'm <laughs> fighting for you. <laughs> oh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just have so-and-so shoot with their camera. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, that, and that and that's been. I mean, I've had, I've had you know someone call and inquire and and ask, you know, about doing the job and then what it would cost and then when you you know you give them a price and they're they're like, oh well, I wasn't you know I wasn't expecting you know they don't realize the time that goes into it. It's sure. not just I'm not just out there for an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever shooting. Then you're going back and editing, and I mean that's where your time is spent, you know, and and. So, you know, when you hear, when you hear the cost and you're thinking, well, well, why, you know, I can't believe I'm paying you that much to come out here and just video something for a couple hours where you have to realize that that's just the beginning of it. It, it, It's about to get a lot longer. So that's where those, those costs actually come in. The the professional eye matters. The professional experience matters because in a visual medium, and I know I'm on my soapbox here, but it's the, it's the storytelling. It's the it's the visuals. It's the sound. It's the lighting. Anyway, I digress. Let's let's <laughs> let's chat with Pam. Uh, Pam, last we t- chatted with you, you're relatively new to your position at the Floyd, Rome Floyd Chamber, so you've slowly but surely been trying to network and meet everybody. And the pandemic got in the way. Are you making progress? Um, still very slowly. That's why I'm excited to do these um, podcasts with you because I get to meet these two lovely folks today. Um, but it's still slow. Um, and then, you know, you always have that uncomfortable when you do walk into a business or a plant and you don't know if they want you there or not. So um, it's always interesting, but I'm slowly meeting all the folks that I need to meet. So, yeah. And what, if, if we weren't in pandemic mode, um, what is in, in your new job, what is your, um, um, what is your main objective? Um, I would probably be in our plants and industries on a weekly basis, just seeing what they needed and what any obstacles they had, if they needed any sort of interaction with the city or county. So basically just taking care of our industries for sure. And then, you know, in addition to that, um, not part of my job description per se, is I would probably be out and about with all our other staff members. So anytime our membership director, um, Thomas, was going out to visit folks, I would probably tag along with him. But, you know, he can't do a lot of that either. So just mainly that face-to-face interaction of making sure our businesses have what they need. And so now that becomes an email or a phone call, which I always hesitate to call because if people are already having to adjust and they're a little crazy in their job, you hate to make a phone call and bother them during the day. So I think... Again, some people respond well to an email. And that, I think that's what's tricky about this whole pandemic of trying to figure out who prefers what, who wants a text, who wants an email, who wants a phone call. So maybe I should start an Excel sheet of who prefers all of those things. Hey, yeah. Who wants a podcast? Uh, yeah, <laughs> podcast. Uh, I, well, I think the podcasts are great. Um, it, it's um we've all had to adjust. And one of the things the Rome Floyd Chamber has done a great job of is, you know, serving as this crossroads, if you will, of business connectivity. When the pandemic hit, I know y'all launched a triage page. You were instrumental in helping guide businesses to, to some of the government, you know, funding that was available to them. Some things, you know, things came down on everybody and, and y'all found yourselves in this situation, having to help businesses in a different way. Correct. Yeah, for sure. Um, And, you know, I think I've bragged on the folks here that did the triage page because they did that before I even came. Um, And they still update it every day and pay attention to everything the governor's saying, et cetera. So they did a real good job with that. And I think the other big difference for the chamber here, this is for any chamber anywhere, is we've kind of went back to how things used to be where we truly recommend folks, you know, because somebody will call and say, I can't get in my car and go visit these three businesses to compare them. Do you know which one offers this? 
So we've really been doing word of mouth more so than even, you know, a year ago. And I think that's really how it used to be back in the good old days, if you will, that it was word of mouth. You know, somebody has a very specific need. We definitely try to give them to the person that they need to get to. All right, Michelle, let's uh, let's move past the pandemic if we can here as a real estate agent. I mean, what's what's the what's the skill set? Uh, I mean, are you just do the houses sell themselves or is it does, are the houses charming or is, does the real estate agent need to be charming? <laughs> um, I would say we have a very diverse group of realtors, and I think that's one of the best things about our profession. Um, we are all so different and we do things very differently um, in the end we buy houses or help our clients do that. But I think we all have such a tailored process and different offerings. Um, and that's just kind of where it fits the, the vast array of clients. You know, you, there's a good opportunity to find someone that really meshes for you. So um, I would like to think that they do not sell ourselves, you know, it's usually at the end of a, end of a closing And they kind of take that deep breath. And there were so many things along the way that I think people just don't realize the legality. um, All the forms, all the forms that have to be signed. (laughs) Yeah. And really understanding those forms, because that could be scary getting something that's 14 pages. And, um, you know, sometimes we obviously tell our clients to read them, but then they look to us and to really understand them. You're reading a contract, but what does it really mean? Um, so I think that there's just, and things come up along the way. We had a stipulation that the Georgia MLS put out during this. Um, it's a COVID-19 stipulation, and it kind of gave um, buyers and sellers, like, if someone gets sick, what happens? Um, so really just being able to offer that and talk through that. Um, that's something that we had to huddle up as an office and really understand ourselves so we could um, teach that to our clients. So I definitely think um, I am in real estate because I bought and sold a lot of houses and I love houses. Um, But I definitely think there's a value to um, our industry. Were you in a different career at any point or have you done this since, you know, way back when? Yeah. So I was actually in marketing. Um, I was, um, for a decade, I did marketing um, on a corporate level. And just for my family, um, I was traveling a lot. My husband was traveling a lot. So um, we decided that uh, I would be the one to kind of realign. And the um, agents here, um, I started my own organizing and decluttering company, like staging um, organization on the side. And he's like, you know what? You should do real estate. And I was like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's really for me, but I will forever thank him for, um, and he took me under his wing, showed me the ropes. And um, I, it's just one of those things I couldn't have planned it for myself. So other people put me here. Well, it it, it is interesting that, um, I mean, I know, I know people that uh, had a different career, but then decided to go get their real estate license and are, you know, very successful realtors. I don't know if that's an industry trend or just some of the circle of friends that I have that it kind of became a career, uh, uh, something they didn't anticipate, but then they found it and they loved it and it became a second career for them. Uh, do you find yeah, that? Well, in this your- is, yeah, for sure. My primary, um, but well, no, no, I mean, uh, but I mean, I mean, it was a, it was a mid, it was a, it was a career change. A change. Yeah. Yes. Career change. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, I, I think we've had a couple of people in our office who are probably in the same boat as me. Um, yeah. We're on a different path and it kind of, you get to a fork in a road. And um, for me, it was just something that I, I'm really thankful for him for kind of nudging me along and like being my cheerleader and taking me in. Well, it's like Keith, you mentioned that your background was IT. I guess people have career changes and uh, you know, it happens. Uh, in fact, I think I read one time the average the average number of careers for people is five over the course of their lifetime. But your background was IT and your hobby became video and you turned it into your career. Just talk about the mindset of that, the the entrepreneurialness, if you will, if that's a word, of of switching switching careers like that, Keith. Yeah, I mean, I, I did it for, I did IT for 20 years. I mean, I worked for some pretty, I mean, some big companies, I, Monsanto and GE Progressive. I mean, I, I traveled all over doing that. And and then when I, I've been in Rome for 14 years, when I was here, I had a 
small IT business here that um, that I ran and and I, I got it. That's when I kind of started getting into doing more video, more on a professional level. And um, it, it honestly got so busy with that that I was trying to juggle two different companies at one time and it was just too much. And, you know, at that point you decide, do you do what you love or do you do what you you know, we're trained to do, I guess. And I decided to do what I love. It was an easy decision for me. Um, and it's worked out great, um, to this point. Um, and, and I can, you know, I mean, and it's funny, I still get friends and and plenty of people that know my background of what I, you know, did professionally for a long time, call me and ask me questions or need <laughs> help with something. So, so I end up still doing a lot of it stuff. Uh, I had a phone call about a week ago from someone, asking if I could help them with, you know, doing something like that. And I was like, sure, I can help you. So I, I, st- I still keep up with everything and still know what's going on in that world too. But um, I, I try not to do it <laughs> as much as I can. I, I, I love doing what I do now. And I mean, it's, I, I would, I, I'll do it until I can't do it anymore. So. Well, good for you. When you when people find their passions, it's, it's interesting. Now everybody knows you as Keith. Before you were just the IT guy. Right. Pretty much, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows your name, but when, and, and nobody needed you until something went wrong. Where's the IT guy? Where's the IT right. guy? Right, and then, and then when they call you, they need you right then. There's no, you know, yeah, because they've lost you know, a file or something is frozen. Or <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. And those are those are the calls you hate to get because they're the, the most stressful. You know, you've got a, an office somewhere that you know they're infected with a virus. The entire I had a dental office, and it was in Calhoun, I believe, that literally had a, an infection, and they were they had lost all of their files. And I mean, you know, and, if, and so all of a sudden it's on me, right? Everything, everybody's looking at me to take care of this problem. Something I literally had nothing to do with. And so <laughs> there's a lot of stress involved. And and so I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm not dealing with that part of it anymore. Probably, probably, sometimes, t- sometimes that got to be too much. You just but. tell them as you're leaving, if y'all would quit illegally downloading movies and music or whatever, you know, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's, it's interesting. He talked about uh, Pam, his, his passion, became his career um, in your perspective at the chamber. I mean, how important is that to running a successful business that it be something that, that the person, you know, love what they do. Michelle has touched on this. She loves what she does. She's so thankful from a business perspective. There are people out there probably trudging through life, doing something that they hate. Uh, what, what is your advice about uh, finding something you love? Well, I mean, I think it's probably the cliche advice that um, everyone would expect me to say, but I think it's important to have passion for what you do. And for us here, we can always tell which businesses have a passion for what they do and which ones don't. And it's usually directly correlated to success also, because if you're passionate about it, you're going to work hard at it and try to make it be successful no matter what. And so I think when you're passionate, you make sacrifices for your business And I think that usually makes a big difference in what your outcome is at the end. But we get excited when we have business owners that love doing what they do because it makes it fun to work with them. And, you know, they kind of pass on that excitement to you, too. And it makes us want to tell everybody else, you know, about their business. Well, it's funny because this is a podcast, obviously, but we're on Zoom. And as Michelle and and, uh, Keith have been talking about their businesses, they've been smiling. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that just shows that they love what they do. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit here because podcasting is a, is a form of marketing and Michelle, specifically Hardy, Hardy has such a high profile in town, not just for the good work that they do, but, uh, we're thankful to Hardy for, for sponsoring some of this podcasting stuff that we do. You know, we're, our studio is the Hardy Realty Studio, um, but you see Hardy signs everywhere. Not only do they buy and sell everything, but they, they do just an effective job of marketing. T- tell me a little bit about the marketing strategy internally there at, at Hardy uh, and how it helps with the brand. Yeah. So we have um, Chris Kerr um, does our marketing and he does an amazing job um, coming from a marketing background myself. Um, and we have another agent who she does marketing for a, a large company. So the three of us kind of like, get it really excited to talk about like our cow billboard. Like that was such a fun kind of whimsical, unexpected thing from Hardy. I don't know if y'all saw it, but we, we, we try to take chances and be a little cheeky and not take everything so seriously. Um, But I, I give our company a ton of kudos. We try to um, 
I feel like our branding is very consistent. You just kind of know that hearty green. Um, and I just think we've done a really great message. And I think our photography is something that um, I would like to think that when people see a listing and that within the first couple of clicks, they have a good idea of who might have listed it. Um, just at hearty as a whole. I just try to, I like to think that we do um, across the board. Um, but I, I'm really proud to be a part of this because I, we do take branding and um, marketing and they really do invest. It's important because we represent our clients. So not only does Hardy at a corporate level um, invest funds, agents on a personal level, um, we get invested financially in our listings also. And so, and that di- I, that digital first impression is very important, uh, especially visually when selling property. I, I had not thought about that, but the fact that you mm-hmm. touched on it, um, what is, uh, what is some of your contact information? Uh, are you, are you on social? Uh, you know, if somebody wanted to buy or sell a house through you, what do they need to do to get a hold of you? Yeah. So I'm on, um, Facebook and my handle is at make Rome home. Um, and, um, my cell phone number and all my contact information are on the Hardy, um, website. You can just go to the, um, hardyrealty.com agents, um, Rikerd. There We have a variety of Michelles, but um, I would also recommend any of them. I just love, and that's the thing at Hardy, we're just all friends and we all cheer each other on. Um, we go after the same business sometimes, but in the end, we're just happy for each other. But yeah, so you can find my contact information on hardyrealty.com. All right. Um, Keith, how can people see maybe samples of your work or connect with you on social um, my website is kbarialimaging.com. Um, from there, I have a link to all of my social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <coughs> excuse me. Um, at, um, my Instagram is at KB Aerial Imaging and Facebook is the same thing. And is, is that your primary means of marketing or are you out there, are you investing in advertising or are you a word of mouth guy networking because of your quality of work? Um, most of my work or most of my business comes from my marketing on social media and word of mouth. Um, I do, I, I, I try to buy ads and help out the, the high schools and the, you know, different things like that to, to buy ads. And, and, and but the majority of my marketing is done on social media and then through just word of mouth. Um, I'm hopeful that my what the product that I put out there is is good enough for someone to see and and want to use it. So that's you know I, t- I take a lot of pride in what I do. Um, it, I own it, so if I'm not going to put something out there that's that's not going to be worthy of someone seeing. And I, I mean I, I I do that whether I'm doing photos for Hardy and Michelle or any of the other realty companies in town, um, Tulsa Temple. I do some Keller Williams. Um, and I mean, I tell you, they're going to get my best every time I go and do it. I'm not going to halfway do it. I'm not going to cut any corners. I'm going to give them a hundred percent every time. So that's, you know, I take a lot of pride in, in what I do and, and knowing that my name is on it. So. Fantastic. Um, Pam, um, uh, obviously contact information from the chamber. Yeah. Um, rumga.com. You can find almost everything on our website, tons of information there. And if anybody wants to reach out to me specifically, my email address is just psmith at rumga.com. Um, but you can find information about all our staff on the website. And we're here to help anyone who needs anything. So if you are in Rome, Floyd County, and you're not a member of the chamber, you need to join. You should be. <laughs> you should be. Uh, and if you're listening to this, because this is a podcast, we're out on the you know the global World Wide Web. Uh, come, to, come to Rome, Georgia and do business. <laughs> move your business to Rome, Floyd County. So anyway, thank you guys again. Um, that's Michelle Reichard with Hardy Realty, Keith Beecham with KB Aerial Imaging, and Pam Powersmith with the Rome Floyd Chamber. I'm Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. You've been listening to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight, coming to you from our Hardy Realty studios in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune.